And I'm back. Anybody tired of me yet? Uh, gonna jump into subcontracts here. Um, and again, like I start off all the videos, just a quick walkthrough. You have your list view over here. You have got your keyword search and you have your filter button. So I can filter out my list view depending on what I want to look for. Uh, of course, we do have um, change order reports over in the report section. Um, so this is obviously not all that you have to, to get information out of the system. So let's go ahead and uh, jump into a subcontract. Take a look at one that's already filled out here. I'm going to unlock that record. Got your three tabs, details, items, and terms. Our details tab, you have your project, the subject, the date and agreement number, and who issued it, so from your company. Then you have an add and attachment. You might want to put up some other documents with this, uh, the plans that you sent them, um, that they quoted uh, the price from. So whichever, we don't charge for storage, so load up uh, whatever you need to and, and no worries about extra storage cost. The subcontractor, who is it? Are you going to hold retainage? So if you're holding retainage on them, you know, commercial public works, typically yes. Residential, probably no. Uh, but you just type in the amount of the retainage. Contractor foreman will track all that. Then we have a response. Did they accept or reject that? I'm going to jump over to the other side of the screen right now because I want to touch base on terms. You have your terms and conditions. Now you set up your default terms and conditions and you do that under your company settings, which there will be a video on. I uh, just want to point out where that is. And you also have the option of doing custom. So maybe the default terms and conditions don't work and you want to write some custom terms and conditions here. Or you can use both. So I can say, hey, I've got my default here and then I'm going to write some custom terms and conditions. Also on this screen, we have our scope of work. Inclusions, exclusions, clarifications, document notes. Always very important to get very clear uh, on a subcontract um, what, what the actual scope and, and terms of the work are. It'll save you a lot of headaches down the road. I'm going to jump into the items now. So here's what's going to be included in that subcontract. When we go to add these items, a couple of things we can do. I probably, in my estimate, made a line item for this electrical work uh, for running wiring for the duct work. So import from estimate. Don't have to type anything. It's just going to pull that right in. So I just click that. Brings me up a box of my items. I would grab the item that I want and bring it in. I can also import from schedule of values because you don't always have to use the estimate and some people start with a schedule of values so that's just the same process. It'll bring me up a list. I select the line or line items that I want to bring in and it will put them down here. I can import from a database or add new manual item. Adding the new manual item brings us up that. Fill that out. Remember to do your item type and your job cost coding. Very important. And typically a, a subcontract, a lot of times just single line item because it's just a scope of work for a set price. As we can see here, we have quantity one, $7,500 lump sum. Now, if work had progressed and there was a change order for this subcontract, uh, and we'll cover that in change orders, then it would be listed here. Or maybe I'm using work orders instead of change orders and it will list them there. It's so really very quick, easy, simple to do. Again, I can't stress documents like this, like you heard me say in daily logs, some other videos, that get this down on paper, get it documented, get it signed. It will just save you untold headaches down the road. Um, really, you saw how fast you could pull one of these together and even get it out the door. Um, so for that maximum 10 or 15 minutes to get this created, and over to your subcontractor saves you hours of potential headache later. So I'm going to hit, I hit the save button here. I'm going to come down here to the action box. And again, 
I can archive this item, job is over, just don't need it anymore, I want to clean up my list view, so I archive it. I can email that over to the subcontractor or anybody else that I need to. I can view the PDF or only if I'm an admin, uh, I can delete that. So only people with admin rights uh, can delete things. All right, well, I hope that helped. Appreciate it, everybody. Thanks.